Okay, last video we figured that this was some kind of reactive from a planet. We think, I think, we may have found some comets. Okay, because this is the shot we got on the 18th. This is all going to be the 18th, okay? It's not going to go from days. It's just going to go that those exact hours that you just see flopping. It's perfect, perfect time to be able to pull in on it. <coughs> Let me show you the cursor. It looks like one there. There. And the massive wide tail, and maybe a massive head of one there. And it's going to be real clear because we can zoom in 400%, and it's playing those hours of the, on the 18th. And this is the V in the object that we blew into from the picture from uh, what we believe behind either that or like we see V's that are out there in space. There's a lot of V's like this of planets especially in this area and up by the sun and in this asteroid belt this is billions of miles folks out there in space this whole shot as I zoom out okay you get this shot billions and trillions of miles so as we zoom in I started figuring that the idea that you know what it's not a reactive on these and we know it's not Mars because they have Mars listed up over here to the left but like I was saying it's like as you can see it's pretty steady and it doesn't move as you see Mars there so I'm going to zoom in on that and like I was saying in the last video the idea that it seems like they're trying to fake us out that Mars is not doing the CMEs or something because if you watch you'll see Earth move and you'll see Venus move but you see that dot that looks almost perfect doesn't do hardly any movement at all it's like it's imposed there or something like that okay in the player yeah when we get that, we kind of know we hit on stuff. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. We know Mars is okay one way or the other. So we shift over here, and I hope I don't give you a visual problem there on that. But as we get over here, and then we almost, actually, I'm starting to see four now. And I see, think in triangulation, and I think this is the one in the original video, just before this one, where I found this. But see, it wasn't this footage. I went a day ahead. Okay, And I could probably even go to the 19th if I got time on this. But as you can see, and we'll blow into a 1,000, when I blow into a thousand, I'll try to I'll start up here at the big headed one here, and basically we do know that there's tons of comets out there. Okay, you can go to the comet list, go all the NASA information and all that stuff like that. Okay, but this is the first time that we've been able to see on a shot of when they do the compilation of the pictures, we get a movie and we're basically getting this one. Or and we thank Setchi for this. Okay, and also there's information from space. Uh, the spaceweather.com thing, if you go to it, there's a lot of them admitting about the CME action, that it's bringing material like satellites and so forth and debris from space. The CME pressure of all the flares off the supergiants and the sun. Now, let me give me the ex explanation on this, too. When I was in the video before this one, I was thinking, okay, because we could see the supergiant. You can see the supergiant light here as the... The banging and the flaring right here, along here, and I know I showed you this before that that's supergiant action, and this proves that it is, because you'll see the light pulse here, okay? Because this is all during a day, okay? The, the clock is sped up so that it's spinning through the 18th, okay? The whole day of the 18th up to like 22 hours, okay? And actually, I think it's the whole day of shooting, okay? So you'll see this, and that's a day, okay? And that's a day. The rise and set of all the suns in the supergiants, okay? All this here, folks, not a CME, because we were lucky that the sun didn't put off a big CME on the 18th, at least not that one that shows up in this shot. And remember, they always colorize, okay? So then we move up here, and we think we have comets, because we really don't have CME action. Either that, or I was originally correct with the idea that these plants, planets are putting off a CME reactive flare, but these here aren't. We've seen Mars do it, i.e. the video just before this one, but it really looks like we've found some comets. And like I say, a huge head there. And also, could this just be the tail of this swirling one here? And is this Elenin? Because Elenin was supposed to be back close to Earth again on the 8th. Okay, and these are massive miles out in space that this shot shoots from. Okay, so let's zoom in. And I had looked at this in a thousand before, and that's why I decided to do the other video. Didn't really want to do another video, but I just figured I needed to show this the idea that we probably have found some comets of a triangulation. Because, like, when that guy in Australia found 
that one, Lovejoy, it was a triangulation. And basically we have triangulation here. And there is also, if you watch here, something brightens up this dark star right here where I got my cursor, okay? This dark star right in front of my cursor gets lit up by either the head of whatever this is, and I really think it's a comet, okay? And it's a big-ass broad, look at that big old sheath like that up there, okay? And here. And we know that this looks like a comet right here to us because it's moving forward, okay? Basically, towards Earth and his ants. So, as we come down, there was the other one that we were seeing here, or some kind of action here, okay? But this looks more towards the basically down here that we were seeing this here. We blow up to up to a thousand as it kind of dissipates. There may have been some planet because as you see, there's tons of planets that they don't ever tell us about that are out there. Your asteroid belt or galaxy or not, those are all damn planets out there. Okay, and here, just basically straight out, as you watch this tail as it dissipates, and it's going this way to Earth, and I'll pop down to 400, and this is just a mass of something there, because it's got to be swirling or something. And we know that Alanin has been known to tumble and swirl and so forth and so on. So we may have found a comet, or we just basically are seeing comets on this shot, finally, on the 18th. Okay? Because straight out, those are comets or something moving along in space. got to be comets. That's what they always call them. Comets or asteroids. Because they're huge, because then we can pop down to, we'll go to like 150, and you'll get an idea of the shot. And it all came out of right here, folks, all that stuff right there. So those are a bunch of comets out there, and as you see, we're totally safe here. It's number one thing, it's what I've been trying to deter everybody on all this crap, the idea that everything's cool. But the sun is in the supergiants, and as I eat, that you can see all the supergiants in the sun. Suns, four to 78 times the size of the sun in the supergiants and that's that one part of it and basically just watch my half, last half dozen videos and you'll understand the technicalities on that. And a quick note that 6 point, I thought it was originally 6.2 but it's 6.3 in Mexico today so as you see the footprint Gulf Coast area and Florida and stuff people should have felt that down there today. Okay? And you can show this to anybody and everybody will realize that there's way more than just the sun and there's supergiants four to seven eight times the size of the sun because the sun's fusion down here on the bottom. That's the sun, okay? Now here comes super giant action. Bam. See this? This is the sun or or another smaller sun of the super giants down here squirting first and then you get this huge, huge massive fireball. Check that out. Okay, and we know that this is Mars we know that you never want to live on Mars. And it's going to be real interesting to see if they get any footage from the Chinese. It would be lovely to see the footage that they get from their space station that they have up there, or at least that it's going up there. Because from what we understood, that they got their space station up there, close to Mars. Okay? Because as we've seen on the other footage, and we've seen Mars do its reaction before, and basically in this footage it somewhat does, because you see it gets small, and then as this starts to come in, it gets big again. It puts off a smaller CME reactive flare. Maybe it doesn't have anything left to put into a CME reactive flare, but it does, as you see, this gets a little bit close, and you see Mars there to the left. And if I'm wrong on the planet that it is, we did figure it out from the footage for the week that it was Mars, so it should be still be Mars. Yeah, that should be Mars. As you see, it's not really got nothing, and then it starts reacting to the CME coming in. It's dark, now the brightness comes, and then the CME action that atmosphere that's on Mars, whatever it's got, starts doing that. All I know is, if you don't like somebody, put them on a spaceship and send them to Mars. Because <laughs> there's no flipping way you're ever going to live on fucking Mars. Because no matter what, 365 days in a year, or 3,600 and some odd years, or 3,000,000, years, whatever we do in stereo play in space, you can't live on flipping Mars, okay? Because that's Mars every time, folks. It's just basically going through the day. And that shows you more and more as it's spooging out on the bottom and then all of a sudden a massive off the top. Yeah, it's not just the sun. It's the sun and the supergiants. More than likely, 
uh, Rigel Kaparis A, because as you notice when we were showing you, if anybody's been keeping track of all my videos, that when we were doing all the mainframe action, looking at where the planets in the supergiants are, the stars, Rigel Kaparis A was all of a sudden very close and on top, or damn, pretty damn close to the sun. Okay, and with all the what we see it does when the comets come by and hit the sun, the, what, it, the, what the sun does like this, what you see there on the bottom, smaller, that's the smaller spooges, and then this humongous flare on the 19th. So let me shut up and see if we can find anything on the 20th. Okay, this is a head, okay, not from the, the B that we saw, but you can see Mars flickering like crazy. And our, we talk about the magnetic string of hair that we're on. The DC charge that holds us in flight in space, ladies and gentlemen. As we have our positive and our negative, or vice versa, on our axis. And just like Mars has it there. And as you see, it's fighting to stay up there with all those CME actions. And it's blinking. See? It's blinking to stay there. So Earth is sitting pretty good, and as you see, we're getting on the CME action also, as you see. It's basically, Earth's doing a pretty good job of trying to keep itself out there in space, too, from all that pressure, from all those CME actions. So. This is a satellite blocker there of the sun, and supergiant action there. See up close at a thousand. Okay. Then we'll scoot over and look at the curve. Okay. So even though there's a huge distance, it takes two years to get there for a satellite to get there. But remember, they got to go through all kinds of objects too. They got to take turns. Okay. They got to go down alleys, and I've showed those alleys before on my videos. So watch all my videos. It's in there. Okay. Takes two years to travel there from Earth to Mars, okay? Because they got to go down certain avenues to not bump into something to get there, okay? Yeah, so we've got comets up there. Whether we're going to end up naming them because we found them, or let's check that out. It's a triangulation. Boom. This is the 19th footage. You see the heads of them popping. I'll keep my cursor away from there. You'll just see the heads, all three of these. One, and then look to the right of my cursor. And another one there. Three, no matter what. And then even something very interesting down here, too. Uh, let me show you the date. I'll come back up and zoom in on that. And as you see, everything's calm around Earth, Venus, and Mars there. We'll come down and show you the date. It's 19th for B. Like I say, when I'm looking at stuff, I just go out and find it. Let me zoom this in. Sorry about all the roll there. No matter what, you can see the head coming in there as it's coming through those planets there. It's absolutely a comet up there. And then absolutely a comet down there. And like I say, it's in triangulation. And I don't think they were able to really see comets before that have triangulation like this. But we know the guy in Australia has seen triangulation on that. And everything that they keep on saying, oh, we're scratching our heads here about Lovejoy. Lovejoy was a triangulation comet. Three different flipping heads. Okay? And this is a huge one because the idea that can you imagine if this would go around something like the sun or something somewhere and then look like, remember that broad head that we seen when we seen Lovejoy come in? So either that or this is Alan and, and they've been lying to us all the time about how Alan because Alan was supposed to be back around close sometime in January and I think it was the 8th like I stated in the last video. Okay? So we found a comet, folks. So pop out here, we have found comets or a comet, three of them, huge out there. Slide over to Earth, and you see as it's high to us, 
come upon no matter what.